Um, and the other is to illustrate um, some of the questions of programming language design. So we're going to say, how come scheme is this way and logo is that way? Um, and most of the answers about those differences come down to the fact that um, scheme is a language for adults and logo is a language for kids. Um, which is partly saying scheme is a language for professionals, like you guys, and uh, logo is a language for um, amateurs, tinkerers. I don't know. Um, so we'll see how that affects the different decisions that were made. Although, part, sometimes there isn't a good reason. It's just, you know, history of what was going on at the time. Um, okay. So I mentioned at the end of last time that in Logo, there are certain procedures that return values, and they're called operations. There are other procedures that don't return values. You call them for some action that they're doing, like printing something or changing the value of something. Um, and they don't return a value. So let me just run down the big points. Um, scheme has a single namespace that is any symbol is only ever the name of one thing. Um, and that has to do with the fact that everything in scheme is first class. So anything, including a procedure in particular, could be the value of a variable. Um, logo, like earlier Lisp dialects, um, and also like common Lisp, by the way, which is the sort of industrial strength Lisp that people use out in the real world when they use Lisp at all today, um, has two namespaces, uh, one for procedures and one for everything else. Um, so um, why is that important? Well, often, like every day, when we're writing scheme code, uh, we want to have a formal parameter that's list or word or sentence, right? And we don't. We call it LST or SENT or uh, WD um, because in scheme, if we called it list or sentence or word, that would um, make the constructor procedure for that data type unusable inside the procedure that had that formal parameter. In logo, that's not the case. So I can have, if you look down here, jumping ahead a bit, I can have my Pig Latin procedure has a formal parameter, word, and it also has, is using the procedure word, which is the constructor for words. Okay? Um, so two namespaces, one for procedures, one for everything else. Actually, in logo, in traditional logo anyway, there's a third namespace. The same symbol can also be the name of something called a property list, um, which we aren't going to worry about here. Um, scheme is lexically scoped. Logo is dynamically scoped. I'll talk more later about the implications of those choices. Um, scheme has first class procedures. Logo doesn't. So that's a huge difference, right? First class procedures is at the heart of everything we've been doing all semester. Um, but it turns out that if you have a lexic, I'm sorry, have, have a dynamically scoped language, then you can just quote an expression. And that expression is just as good as a procedure to compute that expression. What do I mean by that? So let's think about dynamic and lexical scope of a minute. Lexical scope means that when you make a procedure with lambda, there are two parts to the procedure. The left bubble, which has the information contained in the lambda expression itself, namely the parameters and the body. And then there's the right bubble that says, where was this procedure defined so that we know what environment to extend um, when we call this procedure? Right, that's lexical scope. We talked about environment diagrams a lot. I hope you know that. You're going to need to know tonight. Um, in a dynamically scoped language, 
when you call a procedure, you make a frame binding the formals to the actual argument values, and then you extend the current environment. So there's no right bubble in a procedure. Well, if there's no right bubble, then a procedure really boils down to just the text of the procedure. Um, so in scheme, a lambda, the, the procedure created by lambda carries with it values for certain variables, right? And the variables that um, are inherited from outer scopes, like if you have a let outside a lambda. Um, but none of that is true in logo. If we did have first class procedures, if we had lambda, the procedure that was created by the lambda would just be the text of the procedure, the way it was in the scheme one interpreter. Scheme one wasn't dynamically scoped, but it used the substitution model, and so um, what was in the procedure was essentially a modified version of the text of the lambda, with substitution having been done already before we even saw the lambda. Um, and so we're going to see in a bit that in logo, we can just use expressions the way we use first class procedures in scheme. So we can make higher order functions based on just expressions. Um, And finally, um, as we saw last time, scheme, you always put parentheses around every procedure call. Parentheses are never optional. They always mean something. And what they usually mean is we're calling this procedure with those arguments. Um, and that means, in particular, that you can tell the difference between a procedure name that we're calling and a procedure name that's providing the argument to some other procedure like map. And the way you can tell is if the name has a left parenthesis right in front of it, then it's being called, and if not, not. Um, in logo, we don't fully parenthesize things. And so in order to keep straight the difference between arguments and procedure calls, uh, we have to know the arity, which is the fancy term for how many arguments does this take of every procedure. So every procedure has a default arity. Some procedures can have variable arity if you use parentheses around the calls as in scheme. Okay, so this is, um, in scheme, everything has very, very simple uniform rules. In logo, there are a lot of compromises. And they're compromises because um, of what people expect. Right? So people expect to be able to do infix arithmetic. Um, people don't like lots of parentheses. If you can remember back a few months when you started this course and you saw a Lisp code and you said, ugh, right, there are all these parentheses. Um, so in Logo, we don't give people a chance to say that because they don't see all those parentheses. But instead, the Logo interpreter has to know the arity of every procedure. 